armies. Now, if you see the control there, previously we used to have a control when it is an independent system, but today what we have is you know, we depend on the vendor. That is why my previous speaker also said about government should have its own private cloud so that we have the entire control. Okay, and that is not the problem with respect to Facebook, Gmail, and things like that. Okay, this is the Indian market for cloud computing. Okay, and uh, it's around to one billion. It is supposed to touch in 2014, and uh, it was so by the end of this year, it will be 0.54 billion with a CAGR of 53 percent. And uh, cloud computing, computing in the fourth part here is that uh, they are fast, they are adopting the cloud and global service mo delivery model which is mentioned in the national telecom security policy as well as, as, well as the national IT policy. And uh, what we need is a promotion of strong broadband policy for accessing this cloud. And, uh, it is expected that by 2014, 5% of the IT investment will be on cloud. And there are other things, they expected growth drivers or growth banking and financial services, telecom, they are already going for it, manufacturing and the last but not the least is the government. Okay, what are the issues and challenges? Okay, one is the regulatory compliance. When you are going for cloud, you don't know where the data is. With respect to your own data, you don't know where it is stored. So, somebody has to be responsible for the security of the data. Okay? And whether that data, whether it is secure or not, whether it can be audited by a third party guy, that is one issue. And if the cloud provider again subcontracts, to another third party guy, then what will happen? Whether the data will be secure or not, that is the issue. And then data location and data sovereignty impact this. And part of the cloud uh, working group framework framing uh, framework policy committee. In which this is an issue which is being uh, debated much more, in which the Indian citizen data, whether it should be residing within India or outside the country. Okay, this is the major thing and as of today there are no universal rules and the third bandwidth management is because obviously to everything depends on the telecom network and the internet or any network to access the data from the cloud and then data segregation because so many people are going to store the data in the cloud okay now whose data can it reside with somebody else's data, that is the issue. And then something happens, as I said earlier, if something happens, security breach happens, what happens to recovery of the data? And then, even if there is a crime committed after that, how will you go about doing the investigation aspect? Okay, whether tools are required, and what tools are required, what techniques are required, what process is required for the law enforcement agencies, and there are, as I said, when the citizen data goes out, what happens to security as that becomes the national security issue. Okay, now with respect to cyber security, what is the capacity development, which we did some study based on international studies. Okay, and we also have a program in the department called Information Security Education Awareness in which so far I think around 35 to 40,000 professionals have been uh, <coughs> trained. Okay, in which my another speaker will talk, the next speaker. And assuming that there will be 50,000 professionals by 2016, but what we need in the next five year plan is around 5 lakhs. So obviously there is a tremendous demand for security securing the cyber space of the country. Okay, with that we are trying to work out a program where there will be a cyber security education program with the capacity building as the main focus in which there will be formal education
education as well as skill development. And then we want to also set up a center of excellence. And awareness creation, that is, in fact, I, I am running some two or three projects with Nile and other people, other uh, institutions on awareness. That is the most important part of it. And then, what are the goals with respect to the capacity development? We are just trying to work out. Okay, first is, as I said, awareness with respect to cultural and culture and then behavior of users. And then develop information security workforce, technical workforce, and then management and information security skills among the uh, personnel and then a formal education in terms of B.Tech or M.Tech or whatever, formal courses. And then there is a need to continuously upgrade or update the skills because the devices are changing, the techn technology is changing, the techniques are changing. And then as I said last, we want to establish a center of excellence to keep track of all these things. And then this is the roadmap which we are trying to work out that is, we want to start from the school education in which we pick up the student who are showing the aptitude towards information security and then we want the technical areas like contracts. It is just not only technical skills, even for contracts and economics, we need to Okay, architecture, SCADA security is becoming a most important thing today after that Iran incident and then risk analysis collection and forensic experts we need, policy, law and psychology. All these people are required and then performers in different departments, different defensive response and then offensive response also we require people and then at a senior level, from there they can graduate to a senior level where they can come to serve or they can become a chief information security officer in any uh, company. Uh, industry also requires such people and then obviously to when you go to international forums you have to put across your, your views with respect to your cultural understanding of the subject. So we need diplomatic people also and then banking, military, judiciary, all these people require it and of course police is also one of the things for forensic investigation and then intelligence gathering from the cyberspace. So with this, I come to the end of my lecture, except that cyber security program structure and timeline which we are trying to work out, okay, around five years, as I said, we need five lakh people and then the cost we are trying to work out and then, as I said, in the first five year plan, we want to initiate this and probably NIDIT can be a good candidate for having a center of excellence with respect to MHRD industry and the lady in the case. With this, I have come to the end of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Krishnan.
But when we come for information security, as Krishna sir was, uh, has talked in his slides, what are the various security attacks, what are the threats which are present in the cyber environment, the basic aim of the information security attack is to put the services down or to steal something. Means some, suppose you have configured a system, uh, the hacker aim will be to put your services down or he will steal something by breaking into the system. So naturally, the normal configuration of the system is going to be disturbed. And we, when we go for the information security training, uh, where we are teaching the theoretical concept, but actually when we have to teach the people the anatomy of the attacks, how you are going to teach them. Because when you are attacking a system, the system is going, the system will crash and it will take two or three hours to break that system down. You are attacking a server, the server will go down and you know how, it, how much time it takes to recover the server. So naturally, it is a challenge and how Nilect, what Nilect has done, what Nilect has uh, innovated with the technology to meet this challenge. Now, as this, uh, <coughs> this session is about emerging technologies in which cloud computing is also a, a part and the NILIC has innovated with this cloud computing technology. As you know that virtualization is the base of the cloud computing and NILIC has, has researched with this technology <coughs> and has built a information a virtual training environment through this technology which is a non-destructive type of environment means there is an environment where you can launch attacks, the system will go down, but you can just recover the system. So suppose you are building a network architecture, you have a full-fledged network available here, you can attack that network, you can uh, put the services of that network down, and then you, uh, you can recover that network, just within two seconds or two minutes. So, in the first, there are two phases of this virtual training environment. The first phase is this, in which we are basically teaching the anatomy of the information security attack. This is the basic, because if there is an attack and one has to learn the attack, first he has to <coughs> learn how the, how the attack is going on, what is the technology behind the attack. And then only he can design countermeasures and he can prevent that attack. This technology is also helpful for the researchers also. Suppose there is a new virus and you want to know the effect of that virus.